found ourselves at a decent crossroad where we must choose between two paths, reform for progress and prosperity. Be patient, our reforms will revive the economy, President Tinobu assures as the youth set to take center stage. We are committed to a federal system of government and a free, democratic, and lawful system of government which guarantees fundamental human rights. Correspondent takes a journey to yesterday to bring the political evolution of Nigeria. All Nigerians are here, irrespective of party, creed, and whatever it is. We are all here to support Nigeria. Youths work for peace and unity as Nigeria earns the past to inspire the future to mark 64th independence anniversary. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the Network News. I am Elizabeth Omori in Happy Independence, Nigeria. 64 years of being together as a sovereign nation. There is no going back. We stand together and we remain together. Welcome to the Network News. Tonight, Hingino John Adams will bring us reports on nationhood from Lagos. One of our busy businessmen, Musa Abubakar, is on standby with trending business reports. Musa. European market closed lower as investors eye Middle East tension. Oil prices jump 4%. Thank you, Musa. We'll be expecting more. We want to use this period to appreciate the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tinobu, for the Unity Fabrics, which we NTA presenters have been adorning since dawn. Your Excellency, we appreciate your kindness. Just a quick reminder that you can follow this newscast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and news now on X and other social handles displayed on the screen. Now, here's the news. President Bola Tinobu is again urging Nigerians to believe in the country's promise as his government for, continues to forge a path towards a brighter future while also cultivating a nation that reflects the aspirations of all its citizens and resonates with pride, dignity and shared success. This, the new message of hope from President Bola Tinobu in his broadcast to commemorate the 64th independence anniversary of Nigeria. State House correspondent Musbao Wahab brings us highlights. Fellow Nigerians, 64 years have gone by since Nigeria has got its right to self-determination. And here is another moment to trace where the country has come from and how far it has gone. Over six decades later. And despite the twists and turns, Nigeria remains the giant of Africa, with many of the citizens as sources of pride to the world. Despite the many challenges that buffeted our country, we remain a strong, united, and viable sovereign nation. The past achievements notwithstanding, the current social and economic realities are not lost on President Bola Tinubu as he once again explains reasons for the current reforms. We found ourselves at a decent crossroad where we must choose between two paths reform for progress and prosperity, or carry on the business as usual and collapse. We decided to reform our political economy and defend defense architecture. These reforms, he says, has been yielding positive results, including billions of dollars in foreign direct investments in the country. He recounted the successes being recorded and the fight against insurgency and banditry, with hundreds of their leaders neutralized. He believes this feat will again boost the food security quest, which his government is pursuing with huge investments for mechanization and expansion. It is an unfinished business, I agree, which our security agencies are committed to ending as quickly as possible. As soon as we can restore peace to many communities in the troubled part of the north, our farmers can return to their farms. We expect to see a leap in food 
production and a downward spiral in food costs. I promise you, we shall not falter on this. In addition to the several youth-centric programs to give the country's young people an advantage, including the Talent Hunt program, student loan scheme, and more yet in the offing, the president announced plan to organize a national youth conference as platform for Nigerian youth to make contributions on decisions for the future they want. The government will thoroughly consider and implement the recommendations and outcomes from this forum as we remain resolute in our mission to build a more inclusive, prosperous and united Nigeria. The federal government is ready to assist the 36 states and FCT in acquiring CNG buses for cheaper public transportation. And for the new set of Nigerians who have contributed meaningfully to the country's progress and development, the president says their day of honor is here. The Senate president and the chief justice of the federation have been conferred with the honor of the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, G-C-O-N. The Deputy Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives have honor of Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, C-F-R. It has been a long journey for Nigeria, with even a much longer one ahead, just as in the aspiration for a greater country. This president promises Nigerians to look ahead with hope for a more prosperous nation under his watch. May God continue to bless our nation and keep members of our armed forces safe. In the State House, Muspal, then we have NTA News. The government opted for a low key celebration. The Presidential Guards Brigade added colors to the 64th Independence Anniversary of Nigeria with their parades. State House correspondent Muspal Danwaha reports that President Bola Tinubu was part of a special parade and change of guard at the State House. The special guest is here for Nigeria's special day's commemoration. The government is sensitive to the socio-economic realities in the country, and so this celebration would be modest. But then, the Nigerian armed forces would not compromise on a day like this. The Presidential Gas Brigade makes the day even more memorable for the special guest of honor. Another guest here with the parade and silent drill display. Oh, no. The performance by the cultural troupe and mass band was simply instructive that Nigeria's strength remains its unity in diversity. This is your political region. I've sent their representative to lift the treasure. Lift, lift, lift. And they have successfully lifted it. Can we put our hands together for all Nigerians? So all of a sudden, there is joy. There's rejoicing, there's celebration in Nigeria. And so, Nigeria's unity and peace should be sacred for the leaders and the led to protect. <laughs> Though it was a no speech making event, dignitaries who spoke to State House correspondents had opportunity to react to the earlier broadcast by President Bola Tinubu. Of course, uh, the president is aware that uh, Nigeria is fast passing through a very uh, uh, challenging time, but he also knows that we need to do this necessary sacrifice for Nigeria to progress. Um, every reform comes with its challenges. Uh, ours is not an exception. We do hope that Nigerians uh, will, will, at the end of the day, uh, see the fruit of their labor. And he left 
no one in doubt in that speech about his belief in Nigeria, about his empathy, about his optimism that a stronger Nigeria that will serve our youth, our younger ones, and all of us, and make Nigeria take its place of pride in the Committee of Nations is imagined. We want the young people to feel the government. We want the young people to see the government. And we want the young people to touch the government. Very soon, you are going to see us pushing again, even before the CONFAB, which is also going to be part of what we are going to push out of the CONFAB. We need to have a, uh, what we call a national agency that is for the young people. This is a period for reflection. This is a period for action. This is a period for patience and endurance. Things are tough, and the president has acknowledged that. And he and his uh, members of his team are doing everything possible to ensure that this hardship uh, at least is mitigated. And despite the current challenges, they express belief that the better days are almost here. In the State House, Muspal and Wahab, NC News. And of course, several activities commemorate the day. Here's a compilation of parades from across the country. They all believe in the power of the people to change their pet remains a powerful lesson for all of us today. Economy, our administration has massively invested in the production of food crops. My rights to serve our peace. I'm touched off my cocoa, I'm touched Let us also commit ourselves to work hard, to work hand in hand with the federal government to tackle the economic, social, and political challenges. We assure the federal government and Mr. President of our unalloyed loyalty, support from the government and people of River State. If we all put our hand resources together collectively, want to aspire and work hard to make Nigeria great and even greater than our founding fathers ever dreamt. I see hope. I see prosperity. I see joy. Nigeria has experienced economic growth. The president, Bola Ametunibu, led federal government, has taken bold and painful economic measures to reinvent the economy and steady the sheep of the state. Colorful parades indeed. Now, youths across states of the Federation staged unity rallies in celebration of Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary while reflecting on the past with hope of a better country. They are optimistic that Nigeria will overcome its challenges as they declare their support to the Tinobu administration. <laughs> Youth 
should understand that, you know, Nigeria is ours and uh, the hope of the country is rested on our shoulder. We can only do this when we are united, when we believe in the country. No society can develop uh, in chaos and, and disorder. Therefore, my, my simple message to Nigerians is always to remain in peace and, uh, and unity. <laughs> This rally is actually uh, will actually serve as a platform to ensure a sense of patriotism among Nigerians and to also collectively pray for our nation. Today we are here to celebrate Nigeria because we are not where we ought to be, but we are not where we used to be. We need to come together and support the government to make sure they succeed in what the good plans of the Renewed Hope Agenda. As Nigeria, we all understand the situation of the country, but we are happy and we hope for change in Nigeria. All Nigerians are here, irrespective of party, creed and whatever it is, we are all here to support Nigeria. As Nigeria celebrates her 64th independence anniversary, government functionaries and associations urge Nigerians to remain patriotic and be patient with the government for a prosperous future. Here are the independence anniversary messages. Ned Kotswilak Pabio in his message wants citizens to be hopeful as the Tinobo administration will turn things around for the better. In the same vein, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, in his message, urges Nigerians to unite and continue to serve their fatherland. Similarly, the head of the Civil Service Author Federation, D.D. Esther Walson jack commends civil servants across the country, noting that dedication and hard work remain the backbone of government's operations. Meanwhile, Director General, National Institute for Public and Strategic Studies, Professor Ayo Motayo, extols Nigerians' unwavering determination and deep patriotism, which keep the country unified. The All Progressives Congress also applauds the resilience of Nigerians in building a progressive, peaceful, and united nation, urging the citizenry to maintain their support for the Tinubu administration. And the President, Alumni Association of the National Institutes, Emmanuel Obiokafo also commends the armed forces and security agencies for their sterling efforts in defending and securing the nation. Still on independence messages, Chairman CEO Nitcom Abike Dabiri Erewa in our independence message wants diasporans to remain good ambassadors and help change the narratives outside the country. She reminds Nigerians that the Tinubu administration we leave no one behind in terms of social welfare. Let's shift attention to the political evolution of Nigeria. Nigeria at 64 is really a cherry news, and this will be more appreciated if you get to know the journey so far. Miaogidi, in this report, takes us on a journey to yesterday, the political evolution of Nigeria and her leaders. Saturday, 1st of October 1960, the Nigerian flag of green, white and green makes a majestic ascent as the British Union Jack is lowered, signaling the birth of a new and independent nation and a free people. At independence, Nigeria was given a constitution which tied the infant nation to somehow the monarchy of Great Britain. But by 1963, when the country in exercise in our independence parted ways with that constitution, Nigeria introduced a republican constitution with Enamdi Azikwe, the then governor general, transmitting to president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And called on allegations of corruption and misrule, a coup d'etat overthrew that constitution and the democratic government. A government for several years the country labored under military dictatorship and fought a bitter civil war, which not only deepens the reasons for military stay in politics, but entrenched military as recurring decimal for 32 years. 
with the end of hostilities on the 15th of January 1970, Nigerians continued to battle to bring the country together to tackle the socio-political and economic problems that bedeviled the country. In 1975, encouraged by the misgivings by Nigerians and the failure to definite roadmap for return to civil rule by the Gowon administration, the military struck once more and the young officer Brigadier General Murutala Mohamed became head of state. We are committed to a federal system of government and a free, democratic and lawful system of government which guarantees fundamental human rights. In 1979, led by the then General Olusegun Egon Basanjo, who had become head of state following the assassination of Murutala Mohamed, the military retreated to the barracks after organizing an election which introduced a large Shil Shagari as the president under a new constitution. We don't want, want north-south confrontation anymore. We want all Nigerians, wherever they are, to regard themselves as brothers and sisters. With this development, Nigerians believed that the military had gone for good and a new democratic culture would be nurtured. Unfortunately, on the last day of 1983, just four years into the democratic experience, the military staged another coup, toppling President Shil Shagari in his government and installing General Muhammadu Buhari as head of state. The Nigerian armed forces could not stand idly by while this country was drifting towards a dangerous state of political and economic collapse through the continued ineptitude and insensitiveness of a political leadership who were apparently unwilling to change. In 1985, Buhari was overthrown in yet another palace coup by General Ibrahim Babangida, who on assumption of office promised to return the country to democratic rule, but ended up ruling Nigeria for eight more years. The darkest chapter in this period that almost saw the collapse of Nigeria was the annulment in 1993 of the June 12 presidential election. Consider the freest and fairest with businessman turned politician Chief MKO Abiola as the presumed winner. The annulment of June 12 and the consequences forced military president Ibrahim Babangila to step aside and fostering on an embattled nation a contraption called interim national government, which was eventually kicked out in a coup led by General Sani Abacha. The Abacha years of 1993 to 1998, the sudden death of Abacha in June 8, 1998, however, changed all the political calculations and saved Nigeria from a threat to her very existence. Abacha's death and secession by General Abu Salami Abubakar brought to it the fulfillment of the dreams of millions of Nigerians. Though M.K. Abiola died under suspicious circumstances during this period, Abubakar's government embarked on measures to heal the wounds, including the release of many people from detention and putting in place a transition program that will turn the military to the barracks and enthroned a democratic government with Chief Olusegun Obasanjo as president. And that I will preserve, protect, protect, and defend and defend the constitution the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria of the federal republic of nigeria that was in 1999 the death of a sitting president omaru musa Yaradua, in 2010 bringing into the picture the doctrine of necessity was a major point the apc taking over power from pdp was landmark. Pleasure to hand over this also to you. President Muhammad Buhari successfully ruled the country for eight years under the platform of APC and handed over to another APC president. Tinubu Bola Ahmed of the APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. The road has been long, yet we walk it. The battle has been hard fought, yet we won it. It is indeed a huge history that worth celebrating.
so that the future can be inspired for more productive years. Nigeria at 64, honoring the past and inspiring the future, quite apt. Mie Ogede, Antinis. Thank you so much, Mie. That was well researched. You're watching the Network News on NTA. When we return, David Akoji, Director of Special Duties, National Orientation Agency, will be speaking to us on nationhood 64 years after. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with the NTA. And joining us now in the studio is David Akoji, Director of Special Duties, National Orientation Agency, to give an insight into the nation's attainment of nationhood 64 years after. Mr. Akoji, thank you so much for joining us on the news and happy independence. Happy independence, viewers. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Now, tell us, how would you describe the journey so far? Well, the journey so far has been fraught with a lot of experience, ups and downs, as you would expect. Um, there have been several efforts made by successive governments to bring us to a place of nationhood, you know, as a country. Uh, some of these efforts have been driven uh, with slogans that are still fresh in our memory. Good people, great nation, do the right thing, transform uh, Nigeria. You know, all of this have happened at various times in the course of our development, you know, and pursuit of nationhood. Um, what is important to note is that the Nigerian government recognizes the fact that nations are built by deliberate strategies and deliberate efforts on the part of the government and the citizens. And so it is in this regard that you found that at some point in time, there was an organization established called MAMSA, and then MAMSA transformed into the National Orientation Agency, which we have today. Uh, happily, today's government, led by President Ahmed Bola uh, Tinubu, has recognized the need to put deliberate efforts into building a nation, hmm. you know, and into na nationhood building. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, in the Talking about the gains of nationhood, uh, hood, I want to believe uh, the efforts of our founding fathers can really cannot be ignored. So in driving this, what should we be doing to achieve their dreams? Well, their dreams, as you heard them say in the clip that was shown in the initial uh, documentary on the journey so far, uh, was for us to see ourselves as one people in spite of our diversity, in spite of our differences in tribes and tongues. You know, this was their dream. Uh, presently, how we're pursuing that at the National Orientation Agency is we're putting in place a national identity project. And the elements of the national identity project were approved by the Federal Executive Council the Monday before last, you know. And those elements include uh, programs and activities that would address our children even from cradle, yeah. you know. We're pursuing the nationalization of at least 60% of uh, cartoon content that is watched by our children. We believe that if we address this and we ensure that 60% is local content, speaking to our differences, speaking to how we are one people, you know, exposing our children even from that tender age to cultures from diverse areas, that we will at that level begin to build. Okay. And you saw that the president pursued the reversal to our national anthem at independence. That's as we sign into law. And so today you have Nigeria, we hail thee. Yes. Though tribes and tongues may differ. You know, all of this built into uh, the national identity project which National Orientation Agency is pursuing and will vigorously, you know, in place in various aspects. We are putting it into the curriculum. Okay. You know, uh, from primary all the way to tertiary institution. So citizenship studies will become compulsory you know, throughout the span of uh, education. Education. Yes. All right, uh, quickly, I want to ask you another question, a very vital one, because this appeals to uh, Nigerians, all of us. Now, in driving the, the dreams of our founding fathers, I want to believe national values should play a significant role. How do we uphold these values? So what we have come up with at the National Orientation Agency currently is born of the realization that there has to be commitment from both sides. What commitments is Nigeria as a country making to its people? Oh. 
that will inspire commitments from the people to our country. And I'm talking about country now because governments are transient, they come and go. So Nigeria must promise its citizens some basic elements. Okay. And this has been captured in our 747. So Nigeria will be making, is making seven promises to our citizens, even those that are yet to be born, similar to the American dream. So that the children that we produce are born into realization that Nigeria has promised them seven basic commitments. Okay. And then in return, the citizens also have seven commitments. So going forward in building uh, ourselves into nationhood, we would be promoting the seven for seven. Seven Nigeria promised seven citizens' codes. Goals. All right, that it means we all have a role to play. Yes. All right, David Akoji, Director of Special Duties, National Orientation Agency. I want to thank you so much for joining us on the news. Thank you very much for your time. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank, thank you. you. Moving on, October 1st was double celebration for Speaker House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas as he turned 59 while the nation marks its 64th independence anniversary. The speaker celebrated in a unique way with students of public secondary schools in the FCT and internally displaced persons in Kabosa camp in the nation's capital. National Assembly correspondent Mitari Ikmen reports. Flanked by his wife and principal officers of the Green Chamber, the interactive session between Speaker Tajuddin Abbas and a cross-section of students from six public schools across the six area councils of the FCT revealed the desire of the youngsters for a better Nigeria. Let's look at the factors that contribute to the state of education in Nigeria. One, poor infrastructure. Two, the adequate classroom. Three, lack of proper funding for education. The speaker urged them to shield themselves from discriminatory sentiments and embrace the virtues of honesty, hard work and patriotism. He stresses the need to revamp education in the country. The to believe in what and take a role in their own children in public schools. That way they will create more interest, that way they will ensure that whatever is needed to improve the system Addressing the plight of internally displaced persons in Nigeria was the essence of the birthday and independence celebration as the speaker visits about 2,500 IDPs who lack basic amenities at the Kabusa IDP camp in Abuja. The speaker was supported by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons and the National Emergency Management Agency. Leaders should start refocusing on the key issues that affect this country. And one of them is the issue of poverty alleviation. So I decided that today, rather than going to dine and wine with my friends, I should come and uh, celebrate with you. We know what you are going through, and we will do everything humanly possible to bring so to your lives. You are also directed wonderfully, and we thank you very much. Distributing food items, clothing, and providing medical services to the IDPs, the speaker assures them that the Tinubu administration is committed to restoring their livelihoods. In Abuja, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. A gas province with some oil, that's the geological description of Nigeria. Six decades and counting, Nigeria finally commences aggressive drive to harness its enormous natural gas reserves and diversify its energy mix. Lydia Samson in this report takes us through the journey to achieve energy sufficiency and security for Nigerians. In the aspect of the economy now, we that visit for business, we enjoy it. Israel Stephen, a commercial motorist who converted his car to compress natural gas, testifying on the cost-effective benefits. He, amongst many others, justifies why Nigeria is intensifying efforts to promote compressed natural gas as a viable alternative to petrol, aiming for 1 million CNG vehicles by 2027. So what we've been doing is uh, we've been signing off of uh, conventional partners. Uh, today we have uh, well over 75 convention partners signed up uh, in uh, will be, as of today officially, will be eight states. The way to go is CNG. 
and that is why the government has for a long time been clamoring for people. In fact, most recently, there's even free combustion. When you compare gas to coal, gas is on the uh, positive aspect of it, 50% better than the coal and 30% uh, better than PMS. Achieving energy sufficiency and security in Nigeria is indeed a multifaceted journey. This is as government continues to diversify the energy mix and sources. We are also, you know, creating, you know, uh, investment climate, both the regulatory framework, both the fiscal framework, you know, so that we could be globally competitive to be able to attract investors. Legislative efforts such as the Petroleum Industry Act aim to enhance domestic supply security. Similarly, President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu signed three executive orders on February 28, 2024, aimed at revitalizing the oil and gas sector. One of the focus um, areas for this administration is really to think through what we do to enable ourselves to provide energy security, to make sure we're doing so sustainably, the sector faces challenges such as crude oil theft, pipeline vandalism, outdated infrastructure, and environmental degradation. It is high time we stop acts of criminality within the Niger Delta. The orders of Mr. President to bring sanity back into the oil and gas industry, particularly with respect to the challenging security situation we have around our assets. The commencement of petroleum production by the Dangote refinery is expected to put an end to fuel importation and fuel scarcity by eliminating onshore supply chains. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Thank you, Lydia. Great report. Now, the 64th commemoration of Nigeria's independence and 28 years of Ebony state creation shifted focus from the grandstand of the annual event to emphasize uh, emphasis on realization of the dreams of the founding fathers of the states as Governor Francis Mufuru unveiled the new template of governance anchored on inclusivity, education, human capital development, economic growth and equal opportunity for all. Having addressed citizens on behalf of President Bola Tinubu, who insisted that his economic reforms are transcending all sectors of the economy, Governor Francis Mifru gave a progress report of Ebony State since creation in 1996 with the assurance that the state is poised for inclusive and sustainable economic growth centered on human capital development through education and agriculture under his leadership. Our vision is for a state where every abundance has access to the basic necessity of life, where opportunities are abundant, and where justice and fairness prevail. We will continue to engage with the federal government, private sectors, and international partners to bring more development to our states. In view of the present government's developmental drive through the construction of over 700 kilometers of road, establishment of 39 model secondary schools, payment of backlog of gratuity from 1996 to date, and proposed employment of 1,000 teachers, stakeholders expressed confidence in the ability of the government to meet the needs of citizens. Thank you so much for reducing governor to the level that you feel the heart, the impulse, the palpation of the people you govern. And we are proud of you. Swearing in of the new 23 permanent secretaries, donation of 22 land cruiser jeeps to the founding fathers and national assembly members from the state, and issuance of staff of office to traditional rulers, we are performed by Governor Francis Mifru in Abakaliki, Kelebobuna, NTA News. For more on independence reports, let's head to Lagos where Hingino is standing by. Happy independence, Hingino. Happy. happy independence to Elizabeth and happy independence Nigeria. 
The independence celebration in Lagos created an opportunity for reflecting on the past and projecting into the future. But, un but uniqueness of the occasion is in the unism exhibited in spite of skirmish of uh, protest. Michael Olale reports that Lagosians commended the peaceful atmosphere during the celebration. Despite being a public holiday, the reality is that Lagos takes no nonsense on the working day, a farming the industrious nature of the city is visible. And at the popular Freedom Park in Lagos, it was celebration across two divides, with each group expressing their desire for prosperous nation differently. The change starts from everybody, and um, I really hope everybody, you know, go back to the drawing board and then um, Let's just go for the best. Why the independence celebration is special to Lagosians is simply because, being a former colony, it was a time to reflect on the unity and diversity that is stressing beyond tribe, religion, or political affiliation. But we need your partnership. We need your collaboration. We need your trust. And we need for you to believe and to hope for the future. Wherever we find ourselves, we do our best and we support each other to do the best, to take Nigeria to where it should be. Regardless of the euphoria, the security measures put in place around the Freedom Park in Ojota received commendation by the people, especially in easing the protests from creating unnecessary drama. The ambience is uh, you know, peaceful, there is no violence. It's better to have more policemen on ground than to allow miscreants to take over our city. It's as a result of careful planning and the matching of that game by the Inspector General of Police to dominate our area. While the celebration continues, the Goshen say the 64th Independence Celebration is an assurance of a prosperous future. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. It is another milestone celebration for Nigeria as citizens commemorate 64 years of our independence. It was pomp and celebration at the Household of God Church, Ikeja, Lagos, as worshippers raised the nation's flag in thanksgiving to God for bringing Nigeria this far through thick and thin. Lynn Leneke reports. Nigeria has grown into maturity over the years, having passed through many waters and now ready to enter into a whole new level of nationhood. Nigeria's achievement at 64 is what the leadership and members of the Household of God Church in Lagos have come to celebrate with nostalgia, joy and pride to be privileged as citizens of the most populous black nation in Africa. Senior pastor of the church, Chris Okotie, in his message to Nigerians, reminded them of God's prophecies as recorded in the Bible to make Nigeria a great nation. This promise, Pastor Okotie says, is guaranteed if the citizens are willing to have a change of attitude with obedience to God's will. And our faith in God must become the gyro start that will keep us afloat as we navigate the tempestuous waters of our convoluted reality. Nigeria is strong. Nigeria will survive. So hope on, hope ever. The congregation took time to make prayerful requests to God for the restoration of the glory of Nigeria as they offered thanksgiving to God. The 64th Independence Anniversary Service of the Household of God Church provides opportunity to celebrate the goodness of God to Nigeria and Nigerians. Nigeria, Nigeria. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Those are the stories from Lagos. Network News continues with Elizabeth in Abuja after the break. Glad to know you're still there. In line with its mandate to promote good causes, especially through various interventions to Nigerians, the National Lottery Trust Fund has extended its gesture to internally displaced persons in the FCT to commemorate Nigeria's 64th independence anniversary. Ruth Aguele brings us details. 
It is Independence Day anniversary, but for internally displaced persons here, it is a day like any other for them. This is Durumi IDP camp, located in the Federal Capital Territory, a haven to hundreds of displaced persons. In their clusters, both the young and the old, their expectations of a bleak reality was suddenly ignited with hope from their October 1st visitors. The National Lottery Trust Fund is here to extend a gesture to the IDPs as a show of solidarity and expression of love for the people, which is part of its mandate in charting a good cause. They came bearing gifts, ranging from food to non-food items. This God that will give you this man, he will continue, continue to give you the strength and help some IDPs and help some uh, less privilege. The welcome party extended to Karamajiji IDP camp. No better way to express their gratitude for the gesture accorded them. For the agency, it is a demonstration of federal government's commitment in sustaining efforts in reaching out to the vulnerable across the country. At 64, for, as, a, as a country, as a nation, uh, we have memorable moments, we have low moments. In moments like this, we should reach out to the vulnerable, the IDPs, the less privileged, so that they can complement what government is doing. Government cannot do everything. Indeed, renewed hope for these IDPs. Even in the spirit of the celebration, citizens are encouraged to continue to be patriotic towards building a nation of our dreams. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NT News. And the message of hope and patience to Nigerians never to lose faith in the present administration and the nation resonated as the country marks her 64th independence anniversary. These words of encouragement were handed down at an event by the political support group Booth to Booth with Paula Tsinobu during the distribution of palliatives in Orca South local government area of Anambra State. Ungozi Ukekiaru reports. A polling unit based organization with membership across 774 local government areas in Nigeria, Booth to Booth with Bola Tinubu says it aims to take the good message of President Tinubu to the grassroots and assist efforts of the administration to alleviate sufferings of the masses in the face of harsh economic situation. 20 world's executive members in Oka South local government area received a 10 kg bag of rice each and 5,000 naira for their support during presidential election, encouraging Nigerians to trust in the renewed hope agenda of the president. But to lose hope in the country, to strongly believe in Nigeria, and to strongly believe in the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President. And I believe that going forward, that Mr. President has what it takes to fix Nigeria. We are still seeing the results. We are grateful to God and to the coordinators and leaders of Boot to Boot for Bola Ahmed Tinibu today that we are beneficiaries. Recipients of the palliative thanked the group and pledged more support for APC and President Tinubu. We are very, very happy and we are working seriously to make sure that this coming election we will take over. I'm very happy. At least... Uh, is a kind of encouragement to us. I wish them good luck. I support them. Booth to booth with President Tinubu commenced distribution of rice and other palliatives across the 774 local government areas in Nigeria since 2023. Inoka Ngozi Okekaro, NTA News. And that ends the network news. We do apologize. We couldn't bring you the business and sports segments to bear with us. I'm Elizabeth. Omori. Oh,